Hey everyone, Dr. David Clark here. Today in this video, we're gonna talk about the worst Hashimoto's mistake you can make. And this one is too much iodine. All right, so I know I'm probably gonna get a lot of uh, hate mail and hate comments uh, in this topic because people seem to be really, really sort of fanatical about iodine. But if you look at the research and look at the facts, and of course, I'm gonna combine that with my last 20 years of experience, there's some really obvious truths about iodine. So let's get started. Iodine excess, excessive iodine, is the biggest environmental factor contributing to the triggering of Hashimoto's, right? So again, Hashimoto's is an autoimmune thyroid condition, the most common organ-specific autoimmune condition. Lots of people have Hashimoto's. In Hashimoto's, your immune system begins to attack the inside of your thyroid gland. It attacks one or both of the following, thyroid peroxidase, uh, abbreviated TPO, or thyroglobulin. Now, TPO and thyroglobulin are, are what your thyroid gland uses to make thyroid hormones, okay? now. There is iodine, for sure, it's normal in your thyroid gland. Uh, triiodothyronine, that's T3, right? Thyroxin is basically T4. Each of those have iodine in them, but that doesn't mean that, that, oh my gosh, if you have Hashimoto's, you should be taking iodine. So just, you know, pump the brakes on that. So excessive iodine is the issue here, right? And so what is excessive? Well, that threshold varies a lot between two groups of people people that don't have any thyroid problems, right? Uh, and no history of family, no family history of thyroid problems. And the other group of people are the people that we know have thyroid problems. Either they have known Hashimoto's or they have Hashimoto's in the family, okay? The amount of iodine that those groups of people can tolerate is really, really different, right? So that's the first big consideration. So if I just kind of cut to the chase, how much is too much? Well, if you look at all the sources that are available, pretty much one milligram or a thousand micrograms, that's your upper tolerable limit. So whether you're getting it from dietary sources alone or dietary plus supplemental sources, a thousand uh, micrograms or one milligram, that's pretty much it. That's what pretty much everyone agrees on. Well, of course, unless, <laughs> unless you have uh, iodine sensitivity or a thyroid disorder. So that, that, that one milligram, 1,000 micrograms, is the tolerable upper, upper limit unless you have a thyroid problem or iodine sensitivity. But my question is, how would you know if you had either one of those, right? Uh, a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, it takes seven to 10 years to get accurately diagnosed with Hashimoto. So there's a lot of people walking around with thyroid problems that should not be intaking more than that one milligram of iodine uh, per day. So to give you a little backstory, and I know there's people that are going to argue and say, you know, an iodine deficiency causes Hashimoto's. That's just not proven. Like, there just isn't any information, really, that proves that. What we do know from a lot of different sources is that excessive iodine uh, promotes Hashimoto's and promotes thyroid antibodies. One of the big reasons we know that is in a lot of countries around the world, there was mandated uh, iodinization uh, to the salt, right? And that's a way to make sure people are getting adequate iodine. Because if you don't get adequate iodine, you can develop a goiter, right? That's a swelling of the thyroid gland. If you don't get enough iodine, uh, you can develop hypothyroidism, right? But it's a that's a different mechanism than hypothyroidism caused by Hashimoto's, right? In Hashimoto's, your immune system is attacking the stuff you make, you use to make thyroid hormones, and so eventually you can't make it, and you become hypothyroid. In iodine, you don't have enough iodine to make the T4 and the T3, and so you become hypothyroid. It's a different sort of mechanism, so, so don't get the two confused. But we know uh, in places where they you know, mandate putting iodine in the salt, you see an increase in thyroid antibodies. Now, some people say that you know, it's, it's a slight thing, it's sort of transient, but it does happen. So physiologically, we know that too much iodine causes you to have uh, more thyroid antibodies, which you don't need. <laughs> okay, you don't need more thyroid antibodies. Uh, and if you just look at some of the, the, the two most recent pe uh, uh, papers, uh, like two, like 2021, 2023, uh, in northern Spain, they looked at uh, women, and basically they found what I already told you, which is if you have a thyroid problem, like an autoimmune thyroid problem, and you're using iodine supplements, it's going to make your TSH go up, which is bad, right? TSH going up means you're becoming hypothyroid. Uh, the 2021 study 
uh, looked at a lot of different environmental factors that can affect your TSH, and it also found that excessive iodine elevates your TSH. So, and I'll put those uh, uh, references either here in the video or in the, in the description. Uh, so the point is, I just want to establish to you that it's a problem. Excessive iodine is a problem. Uh, pretty much excessive is considered 1,000 micrograms or more per day. Now, there is a recommended daily intake of iodine, and here in the U.S., that's around 150 micrograms a day uh, for adults, okay? Well established. You need about you know, that much in order to make thyroid hormones. So the RDA is like your bare, bare minimum. So I'm not going to tell you that 200 micrograms per day is like excessive. That's not what I mean. But most of us, uh, especially if you're eating kind of the standard Western diet, you're getting a lot of iodine in the form of salt, right? Because of iodized salt. Um, so iodine deficiency is not that big of a deal here in a place like uh, the United States. It's a bigger deal in places like, you know, sub-Saharan Africa and uh, some parts of China, uh, but not here. Anyway, uh, you use, again, you use iodine to make thyroid peroxidase, you use iodine to make thyroid globulin, but remember, in Hashimoto's, you are attacking one or both of those things, okay? You are making antibodies, right? An antibody is like a little post-it note that your immune system makes to attach onto something to try to kill it. That's the definition of Hashimoto's. The thing is, iodine promotes more thyroid perox peroxidase, right? More TPO that you're already attacking. So you don't want to do that, right? If you already have Hashimoto's, you don't want to throw fuel on the fire and give your immune system more thyroid peroxidase uh, to attack. Uh, that's why I'll just, I can tell you guys this, over the last 20 years, I've had exactly two Hashimoto's patients that could take supplemental amounts of iodine, meaning they could take, you know, four, five, 600, 800 milligrams per day of supplemental iodine and not have a problem. Everybody else, every other Hashimoto's patient either knew walking in that taking iodine made them worse or taking iodine for their thyroid problem probably triggered their Hashimoto's. So you have to understand that iodine is a trigger for Hashimoto's. It just is. Uh, now, granted, I'll mention, I'll tell you in a second. I'll tell you in a second. So let me just tell you a little detail about, you know, how does excessive iodine actually hurt your thyroid gland and promote the Hashimoto's? Well, I just told you about the promoting thyroid peroxidase, which you're already making antibodies for in Hashimoto's. So it's like putting fuel on the fire. But just kind of like in a, a molecular level, excessive iodine promotes thyroid cell death. Uh, inside the thyroid gland, there are these things called follicular cells. Well, we know that excessive iodine promotes death of those cells. And death of those cells can trigger an immune response, <laughs> which then worsens your Hashimoto's. Okay? Uh, the other thing that the excessive iodine does is it promotes a T helper 1 imbalance. So if I were like to super, super simplify your immune system, and this is not really even totally correct, you've got a T helper 1 and a T helper 2. There's more. There's T helper 17, there's T helper 22, but there's a relative balance in those things. Now, when you have Hashimoto's, you're not balanced, okay? The teeter-totter is different. So, and that teeter-totter can be specific to you, like you have your own immune system fingerprint. Before I go do too, too deep down that hole, the point is, is that iodine promotes T helper 1, which is probably going to be bad, uh, either for triggering the Hashimoto's or making your diagnosed Hashimoto's worse. It promotes Th1, okay? Uh, the other thing that it does is it inhibits, excessive iodine inhibits some cells called regulatory T cells, good guys, right? Regulatory T cells, they regulate, right? They're very, very important in treatment for Hashimoto's. Well, iodine excessively uh, excessive iodine suppresses those, right? So excessive iodine can promote Th1 uh, hyper, hyper dominance. It decreases regulatory T cells and it promotes cell death. Those are all the ways that we know excessive iodine does this. And again, what is our excessive iodine level? Well, if you don't have a thyroid problem, a thousand uh, micrograms or one milligram per day is probably the tolerable upper limit before you start having effects on your thyroid gland. However, if you already have a thyroid problem, there is no tolerable upper, upper limit that can be uh, established. It's all totally individualized, right? So what do I tell uh, the patients that I've treated over the last 20 years? I say, 
you know, don't worry too much about dietary sources of iodine, you know, because potatoes have iodine, you know, and shrimp has iodine. What you worry about are supplements that contain iodine, right? Uh, a lot of supplements, you guys, I don't know if you know this, uh, are milligrams, two, three, four, five milligrams of iodine. And that just makes no sense to me because you can give yourself Hashimoto's if you have a, a genetic predisposition just by taking that amount of iodine. Now, there are people on the internet uh, and there are people just around, there's some doctors whose entire career is based on the fact that they think that iodine is good for everybody, right? Just iodine is good for everybody and every ailment, right? And it just isn't true. Now, but right. what I'm telling you is the overwhelming scientific evidence, good science, says that iodine's a problem, okay? Especially in excess. And what is excess? Excess for a person without a thyroid problem is probably a thousand micrograms, one milligram per day. If you already have a thyroid problem, whether it's Hashimoto's, the most common cause of hypothyroidism or not, uh, that threshold's probably a whole lot lower. So please, please make sure you're working with someone who understands the power of iodine to do bad uh, and that can give you up-to-date current information on how iodine affects the thyroid and Hashimoto's.